the DS1307 IC, I mean this one, is one of the most popular integrated circuits used for clock and calendar functions in electronic systems. But in my opinion, it is also one of the most misunderstood and unfairly judged ICs in field of electronics. Do you know why I say that? Because it is often accused of not being very accurate. When we use this IC in a system, we notice that after a few days, the time either drifts ahead or falls behind, and the user has to reset the clock manually. However, it is not the IC's fault at all, the IC does its job very well. There are other factors that makes it seems to IC isn't accurate enough. In this video, I am going to introduce this IC to you, explain the real reason why why the time drifts and finally give you a solution to dramatically increase the accuracy of this IC and any other clock and calendar IC. Stick with me for the next few minutes. Before anything else, for those who don't know anything about this IC, I want to give a brief introduction to its application and how it works and then we will get into the main lesson. This IC is DS1307, it's a clock and calendar IC which is usually referred to as RTC or real time clock. If you build the basic circuit for this IC like this one, it starts working and constantly maintain the time and date for your system. In some projects, we need to always have the exact time and date. We can do this using a microcontroller and its internal CPU, but because the CPU isn't always powered on and the device we have built might might be on sometimes and of others, it can't measure the time or clock. In other words, it might be powered off for a few hours and during those hours it is off, it can't measure the time causing the clock to drift. So we use a separate unit for measuring and maintaining the time which has its own battery like this one so it can constantly count the time. Then whenever the CPU needs the time it can ask the RTC what the exact time and date is. Up to this point it sounds very simple right? But the problem starts when you go through all the trouble of setting up the IC only to find that it is not working precisely. For example you see that it is a few minutes fast or slow every week and the user has to manually update the time constantly which really defeats the purpose of using the IC and makes it worthless. In the IC's driver circuit there is a component called the crystal like this one. This component has one main characteristics that determines its precise operating frequency. In the clock and calendar IC circuit we need to use a crystal with a frequency of 32.768 kHz. If this crystal is a fake or low quality the frequency it creates for the clock won't be precise which is what caused the time to drift ahead or fall behind. So the main cause of this issue is the inaccurate frequency of the oscillator circuit. The poor IC isn't to blame. One of the reasons for the oscillator circuit's inaccuracy might be the low quality of the crystal component itself. It doesn't matter which RTC IC or circuit you use, whether you use the DS1307, the internal RTC of STM32 microcontrollers or anything else, the clock will drift under any circumstance. To have a very accurate and correct time, you must adjust the oscillator frequency very precisely. By looking closely at the oscillator circuit here, we can see that it is not just a crystal. There are also two capacitors next to it, CX1 and CX2. These capacitors are also part of oscillator circuit and they affect the oscillator's operating frequency and consequently the accuracy of the RTC frequency and ultimately the clock's drift. Therefore, if our crystal isn't accurate enough, we can precisely adjust the RTC frequency and the final clock accuracy by carefully setting these capacitors. The capacitance of these capacitors is usually in picofarad range, typically from 5 picofarads up to 50 picofarads. If you change the value of these capacitors, the RTC's operating frequency will also change, either increasing or decreasing. The proper name for those capacitors connected to the crystal is load capacitors. Generally, by decreasing the value of load capacitors, the oscillator frequency increases 
and by increasing the value of load capacitors the oscillator frequency decreases so we can change those capacitors and use them to adjust the oscillator frequency exactly to 32.768 kilohertz so that our clock works extremely accurate now the problem that arises here is that to set the frequency exactly to 32.768 kilohertz we might need a capacitor value that isn't available on the market for example we might need a value of 17.63 picofarads which you can't find commercially how can we create this capacitor ourselves and solve the problem yes you guessed it by using a variable capacitor or a trimmer capacitor like this one this is a trimmer capacitor or variable capacitor and it has three pins look the middle pin with one of the side pins form a capacitor and the capacity of that capacitor can be changed by turning this handle. I'm going to do a quick test with my LCR meter. Look. I will use this one which I soldered wires to its pins. I put the capacitor on the LCR meter look now we have a 16.3 picofarads if i turn the handle the capacity will change now we have 3.4 picofarads and if i turn it a little more we will have 18.9 uh, picofarads look now we have 12.7 picofarads. Now, if I use this trimmer capacitor instead of the fixed capacitors at the crystal pins, I mean these load capacitors, I can precisely adjust the clock's frequency by turning the handle of the trimmer capacitor. It seems we have found the solution and now we can precisely tune the RTC frequency using a trimmer capacitor like this one, right? There are just a few points here. First, you can consider one of the crystal load capacitors to be fixed, meaning use a standard fixed capacitor for one and use the other capacitor as a variable trimmer capacitor to fine tune the frequency. Second, precisely setting the RTC frequency requires accurate equipment. This means you can't adjust the clock very accurately using a frequency meter built into a multimeter. Even if you use an oscilloscope alone, you can set the frequency accurately, but you can't set it very, very precisely. The best way to precisely adjust the RTC frequency is to use a function generator and an oscilloscope simultaneously. The desired frequency, which is 32.768 kHz here, is generated using a function generator and displayed on one channel of the oscilloscope. Simultaneously, the RTC frequency is also displayed on another channel of the oscilloscope. Then, we adjust the trimmer capacitor until the two frequencies are exactly synchronous and locked with each other. Again, there are a few points here. First, accuracy of the RTC RTC frequency adjustment heavily depends on the accuracy of your function generator. If your function generator isn't accurate enough, the RTC you have tuned won't be accurate enough either. Second, to display the RTC circuit frequency on the oscilloscope, you must set the prop to 10x. If you set the prop to 1x and try to view RTC frequency on the oscilloscope, because the oscillator section is very sensitive, the prop and oscilloscope circuitry might interfere with the oscillator circuit and could potentially cause the RTC to stop working, meaning you won't see any frequency on the screen. Now I'm going to turn on my function generator and the oscilloscope. Uh, we have to connect the output of channel 1 on the function generator to channel 1 on the oscilloscope like this. And I'm going to turn it on, turn the channel 1 on function generator. Yes, this signal is generated by this function generator and it has uh, 100 kilohertz of frequency. We have to set it to 32.768 kilohertz. Yes, this signal is now on 32.768 kilohertz. 
I'm going to use the other channel on my oscilloscope to show the oscillator frequency. This is the oscillator circuit I built uh, using uh, DS1307IC and uh, AVR, an AVR microcontroller. This is not the subject of this video, the microcontroller, I mean. I'm going to set this power supply to 5 volts to power up the circuit. Yes, the LED is blinking now, uh, which is showing that the microcontroller is running. This is not important in this experiment. I'm going to connect the earth or ground of the oscilloscope to ground of the circuit and connect the oscilloscope prop to this oscillator circuit. Uh, look, the prop is on 10x. Can you see that? Let me show you here. We have two options, x1, x10. Uh, 10x means uh, the prop will scale we we'll scale the signal 10 times. Yes, this is the signal from uh, the oscillator circuit. As you can see, uh, the blue signal, which is the oscillator uh, signal, is shifting. And the yellow signal, which is the uh, function generator's signal, is still. I have uh, done some settings on the oscilloscope to keep the yellow signal still uh, to see if the blue signal is shifting or not. As you can see, the blue signal is shifting. Uh, that means that uh, these two signals are not at the exact same frequency. If I adjust the trimmer capacitor, We can change the speed of the shifting. We can slow it down or speed it up. Now it is shifting left to left. Yes, that's enough. At this moment, I need to adjust the trimmer capacitor so that the blue signal stands still in one place. If I can get the blue signal to hold steady, it means the frequency of the blue signal, the RTC frequency, has become exactly the same as the frequency of the yellow signal, the frequency generated by the function generator, and that means the RTC frequency is very precisely set and the clock won't drift anymore. Here, I'm gonna adjust the trimmer capacitor so that the two signals are the same frequency. You can see that by turning the trimmer capacitor, I can make the blue frequency move to right or left. Look. Now it is moving left. Now it is moving right. That is, its frequency become more or less than the reference frequency. By reference frequency, I mean the frequency produced by the function generator. Look. Now I can make the blue signal frequency exactly match the yellow signal's frequency. So, it's standing still and does not get ahead or fall behind the yellow signal. If I adjust the capacitor this way and install it in the circuit, the clock will work very accurately and will no longer drift. I've used this exact method in many projects and set the clock very precisely. So precisely that even after one year, the clock don't need to be manually adjusted, meaning the total accumulated error was only a few seconds per year. 
Why do I say total accumulated error instead of just saying error? Uh, that's the key to the next point. There's a subtle point remaining that you absolutely must know. Our circuit is very sensitive to ambient temperature. If I use this lighter to increase the temperature of the oscillator circuit, the oscillator frequency drifts out of the calibration and decreases. Look. And when I use this freeze spray to lower the temperature, the oscillator frequency also drifts out of calibration and this time the frequency increases. This means that with the increase and decrease of ambient temperature, the oscillator frequency and consequently the clock's accuracy will tend to go out of calibration. I have to confirm that the error exists, but there is no need to worry because after every temperature increase, there is a temperature decrease and after every temperature decrease, there is an increase. This causes our clock to occasionally speed up slightly and occasionally slow down slightly and these cancel each other out. In the end, the clock's total accumulated error becomes very small and acceptable for many projects. Note that if we hadn't calibrated the clock using this method and the trimmer capacitor, the clock would have severely speed up or severely slowed down. It wouldn't have mattered whether the temperature increased or decreased. When we don't perform a calibration, the oscillator frequency is far from our desired frequency. For example, while we need 32.768 kHz, the oscillator might be generating 32.5 kHz. And with temperature fluctuations, the frequency might vary between 32.45 to 32.55, which all of these are much lower than the desired frequency. Or, for example, the oscillator frequency might be around 32.9 kilohertz and with temperature fluctuations it might vary between 32.85 to 32.95 which all of these are much higher than our desired frequency now by calibrating the oscillator frequency the value is set to 32.768 kilohertz this time with temperature fluctuations the oscillator frequency varies between 32.718 to 32.818 one of these is lower than the reference frequency and one is higher than the reference frequency which over the time allows the effect of temperature changes to cancel out note that all of these numbers are just examples my personal experience across dozens of projects has shown that this method works and the final accuracy we got from the rtc is very very satisfactory Anyway, my friend, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned something new from it and that you can use it and benefit from it in your own projects. Thanks for watching me. Thanks for sticking with me until the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in electronics, microcontrollers and programming, subscribe so you don't miss the next videos. Until the next video, take care of yourself and have a good one. See you in the next video.